Welcome to section 5.5, the sum and product properties. At the end of this section, we should be able to answer these questions. What are the sum and product properties? Converting products of two sinusoids to the sum of two sinusoids. What are the sum and product properties? Converting the sum of two sinusoids to the product of two sinusoids. And how can these properties be used to demonstrate equivalent graphs? In this section, we'll see that adding two functions with very similar periods or multiplying two functions with very different periods will produce the same graph. Here we have the sum of two sinusoids, the cosine of a plus b and the cosine of a minus b. What we're going to do is show that we could rewrite this combination of cosines as the product of two sinusoids. So the first thing we're going to do is expand both the cosine of a plus b and the cosine of a minus b. By our composition of functions arguments, the cosine of a plus b is the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b. And if we expand the second argument, we get the cosine of a times the cosine of b plus the sine of a times the sine of b. If we simplify, we can see that those sine products are going to cancel out, and we're left with two cosine a, cosine b's. So that tells us that our original sum of cosines can be rewritten as the product of cosine of a times the cosine of b doubled. We can apply the same proofs to the combinations of cosine minus cosine, or sine plus sine, or sine minus sine. We've already proven that the addition of two cosines can be reduced or shown to be the product of two cosines. If we have applied the same proofs to the difference of cosines, gone through the expansion, I'll let you do that on your own. You could see that it'd be reduced to negative 2 times the sine of a times the sine of b. If we look at the sum of two sines, we could reduce that to the product of a sine and a cosine doubled. And finally, if we look at the difference of two sines, that will be reduced to the double of the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle, cosine a, sine b. Remembering these formulas can get a little tricky, but you can always derive them by applying the composition properties that we derived earlier in the chapter. Let's look at how we can use these formulas or properties. Here we have a question, transform two sine of 13 degrees times the cosine of 48 degrees to a sum or difference of functions with positive arguments. Demonstrate numerically that the answer is correct. So we'll pull out the four properties that we've just developed. And what we're going to be looking for is the pattern that we see in the question, a sine times a cosine. So here on the left, we see that we've got a sine times a cosine here in the third property. So I'm going to use that to see that angle A is going to correspond to the 13 degrees, and angle B is going to be 48 degrees. So we simply continue the formula. And we're going to say that this 2 sine 13 degrees, cosine 48 degrees, is equal to the sine of a plus b, so the sine 
of 13 plus 48 plus the sine of a minus b. So the sine of 13 minus 48. We simplify, and that's going to be equal to the sine of 63 degrees, 13, whoop, 61 degrees, sorry about that, plus the sine of 13 minus 48, which is negative 35 degrees. So we're almost done, but our question asked, it, asked us to transform to a sum with positive arguments. So the sine of 61, 61 is already positive, so I don't have to change that. But to change the negative 35 in the second argument to a positive 35, we have to apply the property that sine is an odd function. So the sine of x equals negative sine of negative x. So if I'm going to change that to a positive 35 degrees, I have to multiply the sine function by negative 1. So minus the sine of positive 35 degrees. And there's our answer. Both 61 and 35 are positive values. Here's another example. Here we're going to transform cosine 7 theta minus cosine 3 theta to a product of functions with positive arguments. The last one was converting a product to a sum or difference. Here we're going to convert a difference to a product. We need to match our difference here, cosine minus sine. to the appropriate product. So we look through our four new properties, and we see that we have a cosine minus a cosine here in the second property. So that's going to be equal to negative 2 sine a sine b, where our first argument, cosine of a plus b, is going to match our first argument in our question. So a plus b is going to be 7 theta, and a minus b is going to be 3 theta. So to solve for a and b, I can use the elimination strategy. Add these two equations together, 2a equals 10 theta. So a is going to be 5 theta. And since a plus b equals 7 theta, b is going to be 2 theta. Now that I have a and b, I can rewrite my difference of cosines as the product of two sines. So cosine 7 theta minus cosine 3 theta is going to be equal to negative 2 sine of a, where a is 5 theta, times the sine of b, where b was 2 theta. And there's our answer. Let's look at one last graphical example. Here we have a graph that appears to be the sum of two sinusoids, because it has a variable sinusoidal axis. Let's see if we can find the equation as the sum of two sinusoids. With a sum, with a sum we start by drawing a sinusoidal axis through the midline of our given graph. That image that I've drawn or sketched appears to be a sine function where the period here is pi, and the amplitude is 1. So the equation for that particular sinusoid would be the sine of 2x, since we're in radians. Now, we look at what's going on with the second sinusoid. 
whose amplitude appears to be one. And if we look at what's happening on the y-axis, we can see that our sinusoidal axis and the given graph intersect at the origin. Since they intersect at the origin, we must be adding zero to zero, which means that my second function is going to be a sine function as well, with an amplitude of one. Now, the number of cycles we see within one cycle of our sinusoidal axis, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we see five cycles within an already compressed sine function. So we take the five cycles we see times the dilation factor of two from the original. So we get a coefficient of 10 for our second function in our sum. So there's our expression of this image as the sum of two sinusoids. But we've just learned that we can express the sum of two sinusoids as a product as well, if we use our four properties. Here I have a sine plus a sine, which matches up with this third property here. If I make my relationships, the 2x in the sum is going to be a plus b. So 2x equals a plus b. And the 10x would be the a minus b. This tells me that if I add these together, use elimination again, 12x equals 2a. So a is going to equal 6x. And if a equals 6x, then b from our first equation is going to be negative 4x. We can write our new product as 2 sine a, where a is 6x, cosine of b, where b is negative 4x. And then, since we like to write our arguments with all positive values, cosine b in an even function, where cosine of x equals cosine of negative x, I can replace the cosine of negative 4x with the cosine of positive 4x. And our final equation would be 2 sine 6x cosine 4x, being equivalent to our sum sine of 2x plus the sine of 10x.